RF man here. One of my viewers asked me if I could demonstrate my 6 meter board and show the harmonic frequencies that it generates. So I'm going to go ahead and do that today. Uh, this is the board I demonstrated in my last video. The setup is basically the same. So I'm using an ICOM 736 here and I'm using an RF sampler and my GenCom spectrum analyzer and then my Bird 43 with a thousand watt slug. Uh, based on the voltage ratings of the capacitors I used for my low pass filter, I'm just going to be transmitting at about 250 watts. Uh, that's about the limit with these capacitors. I didn't have anything else on hand and I wanted to do this video quickly for the gentleman. So I'm going to demonstrate that up to 250 watts. So basically this is an RF palette and most if not all RF pallets do not include a low pass filter. Uh, this is typically an add-on board that you would put in line with your coax and just incorporate it into your amplifier design. And that's what I'm showing here. Um, this filter is designed for six meters so you have a fairly narrow bandwidth four megahertz so you're operating between 50 and 54 megahertz so it's a it's a simple one band filter as compared to a high frequency amplifier where you're running from 1.8 to 30 megahertz and there you got a bandwidth over 28 megahertz so you have several filter stages and they're switched in and out typically with the selector switch and individual relays so for two meters six meters etc it, it's pretty simple to just build the filter now now this is a fifth order filter um, what that means is we'll just go up to the schematic here um, fifth order basically is where you've got five components you see i got three series inductors and two shunt capacitors okay and then there's different family filters Buttersworth, Chevy Chev, etc. This happens to be a Chevy Chev topology. Uh, you can see from the from the schematic here. If I just kind of zoom in a little bit, um, you know, it's a 50 50 ohm input and 50 ohm output, and you can see the components here. Now these are the calculated values. So typically you have to use standard values and then go recalculate. So if you're interested in filter design, I talk about this in depth in my, my two-part video. It's called Low Pass Filter Design, and I demonstrate a filter for 10 meters, 30 megahertz. Okay, so if you really want to know a little bit more about building your own filters, that would be the video to check out. Um, that's not the purpose of this video, but I do go into a lot of detail on that two-part video I just mentioned. So there's the schematic. Okay, it's a fifth order. You can go uh, third order, fifth order, seventh order. Uh, fifth order was enough to give me a, a good amount of attenuation, which would get you out. Go to a seventh order. Okay, you're going to add one more series inductor, one more shunt capacitor, but this provides a lot of attenuation for the second, third, fourth, fifth harmonic, etc. Now here's what the theoretical Roth looks like. Okay, so basically you, you design your filter. You don't want to start rolling off uh, between 50 and 54 megahertz because that's the frequency you want to transmit on. So I brought this out to about 60 megahertz or so, and then you see a very sharp roll off. Remember that the second harmonic is, is twice the fundamental. Okay, so the second harmonic is occurring out here somewhere at 100 megahertz. Um, and you measure this at the 3 dB point. Um, you see a little bit of ripple here. That's a characteristic of a Chevy Chev filter. Um, but the advantage is you get a much sharper roll off. So you'll see a lot of filters designed using, using that topology. Um, so 
that's the theoretical roll off. I did check this on my Nano VNA and it was very similar. Um, I'm only going here on this to 100 megahertz. Um, on the Nano VNA, I, I extended it all the way out and I got similar performance. Okay, uh, but the real test is how does it perform in line with your amplifier and how much attenuation are you going to get? on the second, third, fourth harmonic. Uh, but by the time you get to the fifth harmonic, um, typically um, most boards perform pretty well. Um, no filtering is required, but the FCC says I gotta be at minus 43 across you know, the whole harmonic spectrum. So that minus 43 dB requirement will we'll need a low pass filter, it's that simple. Okay, so this board without the filter, um, the third harmonic was the highest point, and that was around 30 dB down. Okay, so about 13 dB above the FCC requirement. So now, if you can take a closer look, you can see there I have this in series, okay, with the output of my amplifier board. And you can see that, let me go back and just show here, and then the input to my RF sample here, and then I'm taking my sample, and I'm connecting it up here to my spectrum analyzer, and we'll be able to see the, the, the spectrum as we key up. So I'm gonna do this on AM without modulating, and I'll go ahead and capture the signal, and then we can take a look at it. So I'll key up now. Okay. Now oh, while I'm holding the mic here, uh, I'm going to try to capture this. There we are. All right. So this frees up a hand for me, so I can explain a little bit. So you can see the the span here. I'm starting at 45 megahertz, so you could see the fundamental frequency here. Okay, and then I extend all the way out to 250, so we could get to the fifth harmonic. Okay, and if you take a close look here, um, you know, this is my second harmonic frequency. So I could put the markers on here, but it's pretty simple to just count boxes. So I'm at 10 dB per division here. And... If we count down here for the for the second harmonic, 10, 20, 30, 40, call it 50 dB, okay? I'll uh, we'll go to the third harmonic, 10, 20, 30, 40. I'll call that 50 as well. This is slightly above the line here, okay? And then we're going to get to the fourth harmonic, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, almost 60 dB. And the fifth harmonic is down in the noise floor there. So that's what the harmonic spectrum looks like with a low pass filter, just a fifth order filter, very simple to make, very simple to add onto your system. And this easily meets the FCC requirements. So just wanted to uh, address the question that I got on YouTube. If you have any additional questions, you want to contact me. Uh, feel free to do so. RF man, thanks.